yet. With Avenza, we're talking about the few notions that are very present in Louise Bourgeois' work. First, the ambiguity of the form, the organicity of the form, this anthropomorphic landscape with this growth, this bulbous globe form appearing here and there in the work, the notion of hybridity. The notion of hybridity, aesthetically or in terms of gender, is, is there in the work. Of course, actually, you have a, a sculpture in this room called Janus, and Janus is the Roman god of hybridity. He is a god with two heads, one uh, the god of transition, of passage, with one face looking in one direction and the other face looking in the other direction. And in many ways, I think when you look at Louise Bourgeois' work, when you look at, at her statements, her written statement, there is always this tension, this duality in her work, the absence and maybe the deliberate absence of being homogenous, that people, like forms, are not simple, are not one, but are actually multiple. Here we have a, a, an installation which, in terms of aesthetic category, might be or is the first installation uh, that Louise Bourgeois produced. It's called The Destruction of the Father. It's from 1974. There's so much that can be said about this work. A lot of her uh, biography, autobiography, is very active in her work. If she became, if she acknowledged that she became an, Ameri an artist in America, the ideas, the tension, the impetus in her work in many ways appear during her childhood. And a lot of work, and she, she writes about it, a lot of work, a lot of her art is about to channel uh, these uh, emotions that she experienced during uh, a childhood. The, the title of the exhibition, To Unravel the Torment, is, is about that. So here, the destruction of the father. She had a very complicated relationship with her father, as well as with her mother. Her mother uh, uh, passed away when Louise Bourgeois was in her early 20s. Her father, who was a very dominating character in her life, if you, if you read her, her, her biography, she felt in many ways because of his personal life, because of the way he was leading his life, she felt uh, 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 betrayed by, uh, by, by her, her father and his affairs. And so she had this very... Um, I would say, uh, push and pull relationship to her father, uh, love and hatred vis-a-vis uh, -vis her father. She actually, one of her quotes about her art is to say that she transformed hate into love. Again, the figure of Janus, these two opposite poles that are coming together in her work. Here, in the destruction of the father, where the title is actually quite clear if you want to talk about intense. What you have here in this theater, it's like a theater, it's a small theatrical stage in which you have like the Last Supper, you have the dining table, and these globes are the family members around. And Louise Bourgeois actually wrote in her memoir uh, memories of these dinners with her family, when, where, and when her father was dominating the, the family structure. And she had these thoughts and these dreams of grabbing her father, uh, dismembering him, uh, and uh, devouring him. Actually, if you go back to the first work we looked at, he disappeared into complete silence. There is this little text where the genders are reversed. It's actually a man dismembering and offering the dismembered body of his wife as a meal. Here, this is a father which is being pulled apart and devoured by, uh, uh, by the family member. So she has created here uh, a work which is about cannibalism, about anthropophagia, which these two notions also are uh, 
quite complex and difficult to summarize in one ID. Of course, it's a taboo. Cannibalism is a taboo. So it's just the notion of taboo brings to the construct of the work uh, maybe your knowledge of uh, Freud, totem and taboo, psychoanalysis, and if psychoanalysis is the reconstitution, the reconstruction of the past, maybe this work, the destruction of the father, is one foray for her in uh, looking back in order to be able to move forward. Of course, cannibalism, anthropophagia, has also a cultural meaning. There is a very famous manifesto called the Anthropophagic Manifesto by a Brazilian author, Osvaldo de Andrea, that describe cultural anthropophagia, that you need to swallow, devour the competition, the enemy, uh, and his or her culture in order to process it and move forward. So through the notion of anthropophagy, there is not only the notion of destruction, there is the notion of absorption, the notion of feeding yourself with, uh, with the other. Of course, the destruction of the father, devouring another body, could be very close to love. Lovers, when they get together, uh, uh, are, uh, are attracted. They strive to be inside each other, to devour each other, to make one with, with different bodies. And this notion is actual, actually here too, uh, maybe, in, the, uh, uh, in this theater of cruelty, which is the destruction of the father. And when you look at the construction of this theater, on the center table, you see shapes, limbs that you saw already in the first gallery with a quartered one, this hanging limb that is also a hive. Here on the table, you have these legs, these body parts that actually are an echo of the work that you saw in the first gallery. So the table itself is covered with this globe, these body parts, these rest, uh, this phallic shape, uh, these limbs that have been dismembered. With the destruction of the father from 1974, something happened in the work. The notion of basically the stage, the notion of installation. I mean, if we try to define what an installation is in terms of art, is I think when, when the sculpture uh, where the object, the work of art, expand outside of itself, that the, the works of art interact with the entire environment, the architecture around, the space around, that the space become part of the works of art. In the early 90s, uh, Louise Bourgeois started to uh, 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 go deeper in this direction and started to produce uh, a, a body of work that is labeled as the cells. We have two here, three uh, in the exhibition, are these, these cells, like a prison cell, rooms that she invents, and most of all of them carry in themselves a narrative. If the destruction of the father is a stage, a theater stage, where stories are told, this freestanding, self-sufficient sales room are uh, also this little theater at time of cruelty, but most of the time, theater of her own memories. Here in these cells here, you can see that she actually, she has uh, an embroidered on bags, actually post, French post office bags that are covering the bed, uh, a text that says, I need my memories, they are my documents. Which means that, as we mentioned earlier, her memories, her experience of the past, are the matter of her work. We were talking about Janus, the sculpture, looking both back and forward at the same time. She deals with her memory the same way. Cells, there's many understanding about cells. You know, again, we go back to the notion of hybridity in the work of Louise Bourgeois. Prison cells, so they are spaces of confinement, claustrophobic spaces, they can be scary, they can be constraining. If I go back to the word cell, there's like cell, blood cells that are totally 
part of the body, so they are uh, uh, a necessary uh, uh, part of our livelihood. Um, uh, in French, uh, you say la cellule familiale, which is the family unit. So this notion of cell, cellule, is also present in this work. And when we know how much the uh, cellule familial, this family cell, was uh, a factor of alienation and love for Louise Bourgeois, when you see the word cell and this shape, then they start to take a very complex uh, meaning. Of course, uh, Louise Bourgeois being Louise Bourgeois, you don't access them uh, uh, frontally. You have, to, you have to work on it. So they are always or often uh, uh, difficult to access. They actually put the visitor, the viewer, in a position of the voyeur. So you look in this one through the window and you see this bedroom with a bed, a bedside table cover with bottle that seemed to be there to contain body fluids, uh, medical instruments, rope, uh, chamber pot, object that from far or less seems to have a relationship with the body. Uh, but you also think of it as uh, the, the bedroom of her, uh, her, heel, uh, her, her ill mother. But so she, she puts everybody here in the position of the voyeur. So there is almost a, a guiltiness when you approach these, uh, these rooms because you are uh, peeking, uh, luring into someone else's intimate space. So you look through the window or you go around and you have like keyholes, you look through the doors. So it creates this very strange interaction between yourself, the viewer, the space and the story which is being shared by the artist.